Hey folks, Paul Abernathy here. Welcome to another edition of Fast Tracks Live. So on today's lesson, we're going to be talking about individual brand circuits to a water heater. Now that sounds pretty straightforward, right? I'm sure all of you out there grab a roll of 10-2 and run it to your water heater and you don't question any of it. Uh, it's just what you've done and uh, what you've been taught through the years. But on today's lesson, I want to show you that there is a requirement for a minimum and maximum for example when it comes to something like a water heater and i'm going to show you how we do it and i'm going to show you the different code sections that are associated with that so that you walk away from today's lesson maybe learning a little bit of something about not just what you do blindly but why you actually do it and that's important to me that you understand why you do it not that just just somebody tells you to do it okay so let's go to the lesson and in our Fast Tracks program, for those that are asking, um, this is what you're gonna learn in unit six, and we're in 1H, okay? So that's the section of our program that you're in. All right, so we're talking about individual brand circuit for a water heater. So let me just kind of scroll down. So here's our water heater, right? There's our disconnect right there. We'll assume obviously that the water heater's not within sight of uh, the panel. So there's our disconnect right there. Uh, and of course, this is a 50 gallon, 240 volt AC single phase, and its total wattage is 4,500 watt, okay? Very typical for a water heater. Uh, today, if you might buy it. All right, so let's look at it. We're gonna, you're gonna be interested to see where we go in the code with this. All right, so the first thing we'll be looking at is A. For those that are not familiar with our program, A is the call out we're talking about right here. So the first thing we'll be talking about is the overcurrent protection right here okay all right so it says here calculating to find the maximum overcurrent protector device so remember when i told you that we're going to be looking at minimums and maximums so right now <coughs> we're going to be looking at the maximum overcurrent protected device rule okay so this is maximum so let's kind of follow along okay well in our water heater it says now, the overcurrent protection shall not exceed the rating marked on the appliance, okay? It says, if the rating is not marked and the appliance is rated over 13.3 amperes, it says the overcurrent protection shall not exceed 150% of the rated current. Now, where do we get all this language? It's like, did I just start with that? No. So what you wanna do is first realize that a water heater is an appliance. So it's covered under Article 422, okay? Now, let's go to the NEC real quick and look. And again, this is a beautiful thing about our program is all of these references right here. So remember what I tell you, if you were one of our, my followers who followed me for years, that the moment you see these chevrons, then you want to stop and go to the code book where we're going to do the exact same thing. So let's go to the code book. And here we're at, and I'll show you where we're at. Here's 422.11. And we're talking about overcurrent protection right now for this water heater. And the circuit that's supplying this water heater is really what we're, we're protecting. All right. And let's see here. So we go down and we're dealing with E because this is a single non-motor operated appliance. Y'all all know that there is no motor associated with the typical water heater, okay? Now, some people say, well, what about the water heaters that have a blower? Okay, well, that means typically it's a gas water heater and you're only sizing the circuit based on the blower, okay? So it'll have a nameplate on there for you to follow for the blower and you size your circuit accordingly. We're talking about the circuit for an electric water heater and typically they're gonna have very limited information on it so we know that that is a non-motor operated appliance. So that's where we're at in E. Now here's what it says, and this is where I got all this information we just read to you. It says right here, number one, and oh, real quick, it says, if the brand circuit supplies a single non-motor operated appliance, the water heater, it does, the rating of the overcurrent protection shall comply with the following. Number one, right here, I'll highlight it. It says not exceed the overcurrent protection rating marked on the appliance. Well, typically the water heater doesn't have that on there. Okay, so number one's not going to help us, right? 
Next is number two. Number two says, well, we do have the wattage and we do know what the, the voltage is so we can do the math. So the second one says, okay, it's not exceeding 20 amperes if the overcurrent protection rating is not marked and the appliance is rated 13.3 amps or less. Okay, well, you saw ours was a 4,500 watt and we're gonna go do the math here in a second, but that's what ours was, okay, all right. And then the third one is you saw that this is where I got the 150%. It says, okay, not exceed 150% of the appliance rated current if the overcurrent protection rating is not marked and it typically isn't on a water heater and the appliance is rated over 13.3 amps and ours will be, and you'll see in a minute. If that's the case, then where the, you can go up to 150%, but you can't exceed it. Right? That's what it says, okay? Not exceeding 100%, 150% of the appliance rated current. But it also goes on and says, you know what? And this is the part we want to read right here, starting right there. It says, where the 150% of the appliance rating does not correspond with the standard overcurrent device ampere rating, the next higher standard rating shall be permitted. Now that's a permissive statement. So you don't have to round up if you don't want to, you could round down, uh, but you're permitted to round up in this case. So if it doesn't, if the 150% doesn't correspond with the circuit breaker or fuse, then you can go to the next standard size, right? And you get the sizes where, well, you're gonna get 240.6 is where you have this table and it tells you the different standard size over current protected devices, right? So, okay, so let's kind of do the math first, but this is first one. Now, remember, we're working on the maximum size overcurrent device, not the minimum, maximum. And we're talking about overcurrent protection right now. Don't get the mind loss on conductor sizing and all that. Just follow along. All right, let's go back to the lesson. All right, so that was that part. Now, here's what we saw earlier. See this 18.75 amps? Where did we get that from? And I'll go on and highlight that as well. Well, where did we get that from? Well, take your calculator. Remember, it was 4,500 watts, so total load. So 4,500 divided by 240 is 18.75. So that's where we get that from. So you, you do normal Ohm's law, and we need to find out what the amps are. And obviously, we're more than 13.3, right? So we're gonna be able to use the 150% allowance, okay, for our application, all right? So what do we do? We do the 18.75, we multiply that by the 150, that's the max. That's what our question was asking, what is the maximum overcurrent protection? So that equals 28.13, okay? Now, never trust me when it comes to these maths. You should be taking the time to pause this video, get your calculator out and double check. So I'm gonna do 18.75, multiply that by 150%, and that is definitely 28.13. 125, we're gonna round that to 28.13, okay? There you go, that's where that comes from. Now, when we do that, we notice that if we were to go look at 240.6a, you're not gonna find an overcurrent device that's rated for the uh, 28.13 amps. So what did it say? It says that we can go to the next standard size. Well, the next standard size is gonna be what? 30 amps. So that's where we get the 30 amp for the overcurrent protection. So as it says right here, if it doesn't correspond to the standard size fuse or breaker, as found in 240.6a, the next standard size shall be permitted. And where did it tell us that? Right here. It told us to do that in 422.11e3. We just read it a second ago. That's where we get the permission to do that. Now, again, the next standard size was 30 amps, and so that's why we selected the 30 amps. So, if you're asked, what is the maximum size of overcurrent protected device for this uh, 4,500 watt, 240 volt water heater, then the maximum overcurrent protection, fuse or circuit breaker, is 30 amperes. Pretty straightforward, right? So that's a maximum rule, okay? Now, Let's talk about the conductors. 
So the one thing about conductors is we all should be familiar by now with what we call the small conductor rule. And that small conductor rule says that a 14 gauge is going to be protected at 15 amps, a 12 gauge is going to be protected at 20 amps, and a 10 gauge is going to be protected at 30 amps, right? That's the rules. Okay. So if you look right here, the minimum conductor size is going to be 10 copper. And if you go to table 31016 and look under the 60 degree column, you're going to see that a 10 gauge has a little asterisk and it's going to send you to 240.4D and that's the small conductor rule. So because the overcurrent protection shall not exceed 20 amps for 12, 12 would only be permitted to be what? Protected at 20. But in our case, that 10 gauge or that 30 amp device, we're going to have what? It's going to be a 10 gauge copper. Okay. Hopefully all that makes sense to you. That's under the small conductor rules. And again, in our course, here's the chevrons that it will send you, okay, to 240.4D, right? Okay. And then you'll see the small conductor rules that are, that are in play. All right, let's go a little further now. So that was B, by the way. So B is right here, and it's talking about this conductor right here, okay? But it's also, if this happens to just be a disconnect, it's also talking about the branch circuit that would be feeding this disconnect, okay? So all of that relates to itself. All right, so the next thing we would look at is say, okay, now the branch circuit overcurrent device and conductors for a fixed storage type water heater that have a capacity, okay, so this is the other one we need to look at. Uh, that is 120 gallons or less shall be sized not smaller than 125% of the rating of the water heater, okay? So the branch circuit overcurrent device and the conductors, this is what we call the minimum size rule. Let's go look at that in the code so you can understand what that rule is. Remember I told you there's going to be two things in play here. So let's go look at that. All right, so we're over here, and so we want to look at 422.13 right here. Now, one of the key interesting things here is that what we just looked at at 422.11e is not specifically just for water heaters. This is specifically just for storage type water heaters of 120 gallons or less, but this is a minimum. So the conductors and the overcurrent protection have to be at least this. So what we looked at a minute ago was a maximum rule. This is a minimum rule. It can't be less than this. So the branch circuit and the overcurrent device for that fixed water heater, if that's what we're talking about, and again, we're talking about this storage type water heater, that's what's part of the day's lesson, okay, shall have a what? an ampacity not less than 125% of the ampere rating of the water heater, okay? That's what that rule is, okay? So how do we do that? Well, let's look at the math. And remember, there's a maximum and at least a minimum. We're gonna look at the minimum now, okay? All right, so what do we have? So we had that 4,500 watt water heater right here. And it's 240 volts. And we do the same thing that we did a little while ago. We do the, the watts in the, divided into the voltage. And that gives us 18.75. We to do what it said under what? 422.13 as a minimum requirement. We do the 18.75 and we multiply it by 125%. So I'm going to do 18.75 times 1.25 and that gives me 23.437 or 23.44 okay so the minimum ampacity it's required for this specific water heater is 23.44 amps that is a minimum requirement okay that is the minimum requirement now since you have 23.44 amps you have to protect that at its ampacity. So we had the maximum rules, which meant 30 amp, obviously a 10 gauge. But in this scenario right here, if we were to go to 240.6A and we want to protect this conductor at its ampacity, 
we noticed that there isn't going to be a device rated for 23.44 amps. However, there will be one for 25 amps, right? So the minimum size conductor would be what? In this case, we would have to make sure that we have a conductor that has an ampacity of at least 23.44 amps and the overcurrent protected device minimum would be 25 amps. So you see here, we have a minimum and maximums, okay? Now for craps and giggles, let's go on and go to the NEC and look and see what we would need under the 60 degree column for 23.44 amps and still be protected at 25 amps if we wanna do the minimums. All right, so let's go to the code and I'll go on and go to 31016. And of course you can pause the video and do it yourself. I'll go down here and let's see if we can get down to 31016. And okay, so we only get part of it, but we only need part of it. So in this case, again, we're under here. So it looks like 12 is only good for 20. There's that little asterisk you see right here. Okay, so in that scenario, we would need to still jump to a 10 gauge. Okay, so in that scenario, we would have, so we would still have a 10 gauge. Now, here's one question that people ask me all the time. Can I put a 25 amp rated overcurrent device on a 10 gauge that's good for 30 amps? Absolutely you can. Don't know why you'd want to. I would go on in since it's 30 amps, I would protect it at a 30 amp overcurrent device and follow the maximum allowance. The minimum allowance would be a 10 gauge and it would still require you to use a 25 amp if you're looking at the minimum requirement. So what's important to realize is that there's a minimum requirement and there's a maximum requirement. That's the whole purpose of this lesson today to show you that there are minimums and there are maximums, especially in an example of this water heater. Now, if you wanna run 10 gauge, okay? If you wanna run the 10 gauge and you want to, excuse me here, let me go back. If you wanna run the 10 gauge and you wanna do what? You wanna protect it at uh, 25 amps? That's okay. That's perfectly fine. But the reality is that 12 gauge, you would be required to protect it at what? You're required to protect it at 20 amperes. And what did it say? It says the minimum has to be 125% of whatever the amp rating is. So that gave us 23.44. So the 12 gauge is not gonna work. And you would have to bump it up to a 25 amp device as a minimum. And of course, when that happens, you gotta do what? You have to protect that conductor at its ampacity. Right, so I have to have a conductor that's at least 23.44 amps. So that's why I'm gonna have to jump that up to a 10 gauge and it's good for 30. I got a little extra to spare, right? So you see how those dynamics work when it comes to sizing and, and things like that. So you could have 10 gauge with a 25 amp rated overcurrent device, or you could have a 10 gauge with a 30 amp. And that's mainly what most people are gonna do, okay? All right, well, Hopefully you got something out of that little exercise. Um, I just want you to realize that there is a minimum and maximum. Um, and just remember the 422.11e is not just for water heaters. We use that as an example. It's, it deals with non-motor operated appliances, okay? That type of application. It doesn't need to be about water heaters, but that makes for the best lesson because I wanna be able to show you the dynamics between 422.13, which is a minimum requirement, and the possibility of using 422.11e for a maximum requirement. All right, hopefully you got something out of that. Trust me, in our Fast Tracks program, we go into extreme detail. If you really wanna learn the National Electrical Code, all these little nuances, all these little code references, you wanna to come to Wednesday night sessions and just uh, ask me questions and interact with me. Um, get in our Fast Tracks program. There's no better way to learn the NEC. And it's not just for exam prep. If you really wanna just learn the NEC, we have a great program for that called Mastering the NEC. It's available over on this website. I look forward to having you as a student. Take care, God bless.